Hello and uh, welcome everyone to CATI's Catapult web webcast uh, entitled Five and a Half Things You Didn't Know You Could Do with SolidWorks PDM Bill of Materials. Uh, this presentation will have valuable information not only for PDM admins, uh, but as well as day-to-day -day users, and will work for both uh, PDM Standard as well as PDM Professional. Uh, today's presenter will be Jeff Sweeney from our Columbus, Ohio office. So with that, Jeff, I'll let you uh, take it away. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, the, uh, as far as questions go, please don't feel free to, I mean, please feel free to add them up. The, uh, I've done this presentation now twice, both at SolidWorks World, and at both times it kind of it really became kind of a fun uh, type of deal where we were able to talk back and forth and, and uh, get, get a lot of questions. Uh, it, take, it took me about an hour there uh, at both times, so I would expect uh, unless we get a lot of questions in probably around 45 minutes, probably a little less than that as, as far as time goes to build things up. So here, here's the type, types of things. Uh, wow. It, it's, uh, are you guys all as nervous as I am about doing this? Let's see if I can relax and get this thing better. Uh, the, the agenda itself, what we're going to cover, uh, we're going to talk about the basically the build material tab. Where, so when you're in SolidWorks PDM, either pro or uh, standard, you do can see most of the things in here. We're going to talk about the uh, quantity overrides, how to compare build materials, actually editing build materials right in, inside, um, some other little tricks and, and tips and, and other types of things as well. Now where the title came from, uh, five and a half things. It's, it's kind of a fun little play on, uh, I don't know if you guys have been following the news, but there's a lot of states now looking to legalizing uh, off, uh, gambling on sports. And, you know, you always see in the sports thing how they always have that half a point. So my, my goal is, of this presentation for you guys is for you guys to learn more than five things, and uh, that hopefully you'll pick up some little nuggets in here. Uh, even the experienced users should find things. And again, like O'Brien said, most of this stuff is going to be for average everyday users, but there will definitely be some things for administrators because there are going to be some things here that you need to set up and uh, for the users to be able to go through. So that's how we build this up. So uh, I guess I won't need to spend much time on this slide unless you want to write down my email address. If you want to contact me directly, you're certainly welcome to do so. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, Brian's got information at the end to how to download this if you, if you want to see it again. So at first, let's, let's talk about the, the build material types, as, uh, as probably a lot of you guys have seen. Uh, there's lots of build material types that PDM supports, and uh, depending on uh, which one you're using, there's four types of build material types supported by standard, and Pro actually has six. So the differences of them are, and you can tell by the icons, the, the top icon the, the one I have the build material next to. That's just a regular, what we call, a lot of people call calculated build material. Every time you check in a, a, a file with references, a PDM will build that structure up for you automatically. So that's a, a kind of, here's what uh, I think is exactly inside that build material. Now, certainly you do have the ability to take that build material and modify it, if you so choose, and convert it into a named build material, which is uh, shown by this little icon over here. Now, named build materials are for pro only. But uh, there, you can manipulate the build materials if you if you if you need to. The moment build materials and moment cut list, those are pretty tightly tied together. And uh, the biggest difference between them is, is, is that uh, one is a, is a, well. Let's do it this way. Let's let's imagine that you have a welding uh, two by two stick of uh, of steel tube, and uh, it's you cut it in half, and so now you have two four foot pieces. Well, in that example there, the weldment cut list will show on, on a, the quantity of two, four feet long, but the weldment bill material would show, would nest all that information up and show you that you have one two by two piece of steel total of eight feet long. And so the weldment bill material is oftentimes what the purchaser wants to have, right? Hey, I need to know total amount of steel that I need in this particular uh, weldment versus the cut list is actually oftentimes what the, the actual welder wants, right? So he can go through and, and do his count to make sure he's got everything that he needs. The, um, the other kind that, that's not listed here as far as, uh, oh, I guess I'll bring this up too. And you'll see this icon as, as well, both PDM Standard and PDM Pro. And what that is is that is the actual build material in the document itself. So if we're talking about either a SOLIDWORKS drawing or SOLIDWORKS assembly file, right, you can have a build material table right there. And so this it gives you a window to be able to pick and choose that actual entity there. And so now you can see that, that right, build material. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to jump over to my vault. 
take you to a project that I know has some information in it. So this assembly here, actually this is a drawing, if you look at the preview, see it has a table in it. And so here's what we've been talking about, is that I can have the little icon right there at the very top tells me this is the actual table itself. So the nice thing is, as a user, I don't have to open up the SolidWorks document. I can come and see the, the, the table built right into from here. And then this guy actually has several different types of calculated build materials. And uh, I do that because sometimes I need different types of calculated build materials depending on what I'm doing. Maybe um, I, I have a, a different type of build material for, actually, let me hit the wrong button here. Let's go back to it. Maybe my ERP export needs different columns exported out. And so that's a real quick way to get a completely different column set. They're still looking at the same information, still reading the same part from, from the, the database itself. But uh, I can different columns of different people. Uh, another example that you see sometimes is uh, maybe the, the, the engineers want a different set of columns than what the purchasing agents do. So they have different, th different things. So you can build these guys all up right there inside the administration tool if you ever need to. The, um, yeah, and so the other one I said there, there's a couple extra. There's also a bill material type in item, for items if you're a PDM pro. I don't know if hardly anybody is using, still using PDM items, but that is the additional one as well. And then, of course, name bill materials is the, uh, the other one that's available only in pro. And again, the name bill material is, is, gives you the ability to have a different type of thing. And we actually have a couple of really nice slides we'll cover here in a little bit. So compare. Let's start start off with, with the, the compare build material, and this gives you the ability to see what's the difference between one build material and another. Uh, my most common example for that is let's let's imagine that you go to the purchasing agent and say, here you go, start uh, requisitioning uh, these items. So you give them uh, build material number one, and off they go. Time passes and you start making changes to that assembly, and then you go back to the, the purchasing agent a couple of weeks later and say, Help, here here's what I want you to get instead. And, of course, their first question is always, well, what's different? What do I need to buy? What do I need to sell back to stock? Or, or what, what has changed? And so that's where this comparable material comes in really pretty neat. Let me show you how that works. So certainly, as you've certainly seen before, this is a, a build material here. And I'm looking at version 2 of this build material. But you can look at different build material versions, right? Choose a different version right from here. I can even change the uh, the configuration as well. It's show me configuration A versus configuration B. Just kind of build these up. But unless you have really fast eyes, it's not super easy to see. I can see that it changed, but I can't really see what's the difference. So that's where this little button over here on the right-hand side comes in. It's a, a comparable material. And so what it will do is it takes what I'm currently looking at. So right now I'm looking at the, uh, the version 2 default. And I'm going to go ahead and compare. And now um, I'm in compare mode. And so you see it's a little compare mode. Uh, so everything's kind of read only at this point in time. But what I'm doing is I'm comparing version 2 default to version 1 default. And down here at the very bottom right-hand corner, I'm kind of seeing a real a list between what's new, what's different. In this case, there's only one thing different. Uh, that I, Oh, look, I've deleted that new crown part from uh, what was originally in version 1 and version 2. So you kind of think of, of over here on the left-hand side, that's what you're currently looking at, and then I'm comparing it to this. And why I bring that up is that uh, you can sometimes get confused. So I can feel from here that I've deleted, when I went to version 2, I deleted that new crown. But if I wasn't really paying attention, maybe I was, was looking at version 1, and then I start the compare tool. Now version 1 is over here on the side, and now you see that new crown is considered new. Because I'm actually, well, I guess when I add, it went back to version 1, I add, I add that in. So the order that you're looking at sometimes can be a little tricky, so pay attention to that and make sure you understand uh, what, the, what you're certainly looking at. The, uh, another nice little uh, entity that I want to make sure that I point out is the, um, the built versus latest. A lot of people don't, don't pay attention to that, and you can really kind of get in trouble with that. And here's a kind of a good example. What I've done is, uh, let's go back to this little simpler assembly. I have in this assembly here, the, um, there's, there's a pin that is currently uh, made of, of steel. And so when I re release this assembly, that's, that's currently what it is. If I jump over to the Contains tab, you'll notice that the pin, actually, I've made an additional version of this pin since that assembly was done. So that's why this is bold. Um, that the assembly was released at when PIN was version 1. And now, if I look at the PIN today, version 2 of the PIN, let's look at the data card of it, 
you see that the, the pin is currently today brass. So here's why this is important to keep an eye on. So the build material of version one of this assembly, the pin was actually uh, steel. And that's because I'm looking at as built. So as built means tell me exactly what this assembly looked like at that, at that point in time versus if I switch to the latest, now you notice that the pin is, well, okay, the pins are actually now made of brass. And so it kind of, be, you know, as you can imagine, this can be a significant piece of, of information that you need to make sure uh, that you're always watching between latest and, and, uh, and as built. So uh, definitely keep an eye on that. Let's go back to another funnel. Hopefully I got a couple of new guys for that one. I'll get a couple of good points for that one. That's a good one to watch. Um, here's another one. Uh, did, did you know that you can actually edit entities inside that build material as well? And so when I'm looking at a build material, uh, anything that is editable is going to be have a little blue uh, outline around side of it. And so um, we'll talk about that a little bit. And then anything that is changed is going to turn into this little uh, orange color as well. So first, notice uh, this build material right now is not checked out by me. And um, you see that the uh, the document number actually is editable even then. And the reason why is that these, this document number is actually a uh, version-free variable, right? If you remember the version-free variables, those are a, a new, new-ish kind of variable that, P, that Solvers released that gives you the ability to, you can edit these variables at any time. I don't have to, uh, have to check out the file to make that particular change. Um, so certainly these kinds of things can't be written into the files but they're really good uh, types of things for uh, the stuff that you want to be able to change and not worry about the history. So that's why these are always editable, because this is a special kind of variable. But you notice nothing else is editable. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to check out that main assembly. SolarWorks always does. Would you like to check out any of the children as well? And so no, I just want to check out that assembly. And so now you see that there's uh, more things that are available to edit right from here. Uh, probably the most interesting is, is that the quantity is actually editable here. This will give me a chance to do a quantity override. Uh, so maybe if I want to know, this is actually I need to have three of those brackets. And now I've built that up and I can hit the save button. And now I've saved that particular bracket as three. So here, here's a, a very common thing. I've done this before. Uh, let's imagine that you, I did a, I did a breadboard not very long ago. And on that breadboard I had almost a thousand little LEDs. Now, I didn't want to model all thousand of those LEDs because I knew it was going to really slow my assembly down. But I wanted to make sure that I had a thousand of them. And so what you can do is you can come into, find that LED, do a quantity override, and now any time I'm looking at this assembly, the quantity is going to show 1,000, even though you and I know that if we look at the file inside the SOLIDWORKS, it will just show a quantity of, of the actual quantity itself. And so that's what this orange is telling you. At this point in time, I'm now responsible for the, the total quantity of the bracket. So if I go into SOLIDWORKS and make the change there, add more brackets or change the brackets there, this will always stay three no matter what I've done. So if ever I change my mind and so, say, you know, really, I'd really rather go back to the computed quantity, that's actually the ability to just right mouse click on the, any quantity that you've ever overridden, and I can switch back to the computed quantity, and now PDM will now be responsible for keeping that number up to date. So that's good to go. Also notice the, um, the some of these guys are not editable. And the reason why is that if you see, this is a sub-assembly, and inside of there are these three parts. And so these three parts I can't edit. Because if you think about it, the quality of these is responsible by that assembly. So I come up here, and then I check out this assembly. Now when I go back to, uh, to here, you'll see that uh, they're now editable as well. Uh, is there a way to edit? I got a question. Uh, is there a way to edit several cells at once in the same way as verbiage in Excel? I'm assuming you're meaning something like highlight these guys and, and put some information here and then down to each one. No, I don't, I don't have the ability to highlight multiple cells. Uh, so no, unfortunately, I, I cannot edit more than one cell at a time. It, it is a one at a time. You know. uh, other interesting points uh, to this is, is the, uh, for example, maybe I want to edit uh, the description. Well, because I can't edit the description because that female yoke is not checked out. So let's go to the female yoke. We'll check out the female yoke. Now when I look at that assembly, you notice that now I can actually edit it. So I can make a change here, and that will actually update the, uh, the actual um, build material itself, and actually the data card itself. So uh, that's, uh, I can't really do that here. 
Um, I just want to make sure I point out, though, is notice all of these options are available only because I've switched to the latest. And so if this was still on as-built, then I couldn't edit a lot of these fields. At least I can because of check out. But I, I couldn't edit a lot of the fields because, again, the as-built means to show me exactly what was in that assembly back then. Uh, when you override the computer bill material, will the user input value show on the drawings? Oh, that's a great question. So, so what the question is, is you remember a little bit ago, I overread the, the, the total quantity on the, on the bracket. And no, that is a one-way street. So it will not go back until SOLIDWORKS is none the wiser. So when I made the, the quantity three of the bracket, SOLIDWORKS didn't know that. And so no, the, the drawing itself wouldn't update that. Certainly the balloons wouldn't, or, and or if I had a bill material. And so that's, that's a good point. Um, if you're going to allow your users to be able to manipulate the bill materials here, especially an example of a quantity override, uh, you as a company are going to need to decide which is going to be the master. Um, when I'm, um, do I want to say the drawings on the, the, the print are the master, or is it the PDM data is the master? And uh, to add a little bit more to that, because that's, that's kind of an interesting uh, can of worms I know I just opened up, is that if you decide, yeah, I think maybe, you know, I allow, I love the functionality of PDM's bill of materials, um, and I'm, I think I will make that to be the master, then maybe you want to consider not putting the bill of materials on the drawings, right? Tell the users, hey, you know, you, you have PDM, log into PDM, and get the bill of material information right from there. You still may, you know, certainly balloon and things like that, but oftentimes the balloon, the, but you, there might be some fields on that bill of material inside of uh, SolarWorks that you, that you wouldn't want to display anymore. And the quantity is a very typical one. Good. That's a great question. Thanks for bringing that one over, Brian. Yep. The, um, okay, let's go back to our slide presentation and see where we are. I'll head in here for a couple seconds if you have any other questions about that because uh, those are some pretty interesting points there. So kind of in, in short, uh, just a review, the, uh, the, the one thing is make sure that you're looking at the latest. Don't look at the, I mean, look at the, the latest version. That's when most of these guys will turn blue if they're not before because, again, if you're looking at as built, as built tell, is saying, well, here's what this file looks like the last time it was saved in SOLIDWORKS. So there, there's definitely a little bit of a difference between those guys. So uh, I guess here, here's a, I forgot I had the slide, so just a real view of the quality override. As you can see, in this case, they've done six of them. And then if you ever want to go back, there is a just right mouse click on that particular cell, use the bill material quantity. It's your responsibility if you've done an override to make sure you keep that up to date. Because people go, well, all right, you want to override it? That means it must be yours. So here's my favorite question of the, whole, of the whole deal. Let's go ahead and go to one of my bill materials. So I've been teaching PDM for about 12 years now, and I've done this, this presentation several different times. I've only ever had two people have any idea what this bottom option uh, actually means. So we all speak English, and we all can agree that these words here in English, but can anybody guess what that field actually means? Look for variable and reference specific values. It's kind of a weird one. Um, and, but what this really is, is this gives you the ability as a PDM user to put specific information about a, a particular part that doesn't really live in the part. And so what I've done here is I made a special variable, and I called it bloom. I called it bloom. And um, this is the only time that I've ever done a PDM, made a variable, and never put it on a data card. Um, so, it, it, because if you think about it, if, if this needs to be special for that particular entity, I can't have it on the data card because I need to have it different. So, what I'm going to do here, and a couple, I have a couple good examples here of, of where you might use this. One is certainly a balloon number, right? Uh, you know, I have a, a balloon that I want to be able to an item number, and, and say I have a part in, on this assembly, on assembly A, and it's part number one, and on an, another assembly, it's part number two. Well, I can't certainly put that information on the part because now from the, uh, these are things that describe the, the assembly, not really the part itself. So it's not part of the thing. Uh, another example would be uh, torque values. Imagine I have a nut that I torque down to 50 foot-pounds on one assembly and I down to 30 foot-pounds on another assembly. Again, that's assembly information about that part. 
Uh, so that would be there. Um, now, spare parts is another, another one. And one, or one use of the part might be worn, so I might not have to make this a, a spare part. But another use, maybe it's, it's just a stopper or something like that. It doesn't wear, so it's not a spare part. So depending on how, the, how it's using the assembly is where this would go. So what you do is you make the, make the variable. Don't put it on a data card. And just add it to your list and look in variable specific values. So what that gives me the ability to do, now on my bill material, you'll see that I have this blue number over here. And if I switch to uh, latest, now I can actually enter in my blue number here. One, two, three, four, whatever I want to do. Actually, I have to type in here, two, three, four, or, or, or maybe assembly notes, uh, uh, Titan first. I don't know what you might want to put in here, but you can put notes in here, different types of things, because these guys are both using just that last option there. And they're just stored here. So later on, if I use this bracket anywhere else, in those assemblies, that assembly won't know of these two entities right? because these are only in, in that each one. So hopefully that's pretty cool. Not that a lot of people know that option is available. Not a lot of people even know what that means when they read it. So hopefully uh, I explained it pretty well. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you, if you got that one. But I, I think it's a, a really neat, there's a lot of opportunities to use this option, but not many people know how to use it. Comments is another one I see here that I have in my list, the one I have. So here's, a, here's an interesting one. Um, I'll, show, I'll tell you, then I'll show you. So in, in my little example that you will you join assembly there, I actually have the same file used twice. I have one in a, in a long configuration and a short configuration. So if you use configurations as unique parts, you would probably want to choose the default section it would look something like this, right? And in the long configuration, I have a quantity of one. And in the short configuration, I have a quantity of two. Versus if I go ahead and put it at the at symbol, then now I, you can see that I have the same part as a quantity of three. So let's all go through there. Uh, is the reference variable version free or, or only specific to the, to the variable? So the, the, the question is, is, is that, um, well, I'm going to do two things at once. So let's, let's do these questions first. So uh, the first question is, is, is the reference variable version free or specific to the, to the build material version? In this case, because it's not on the, on the, on the file itself, it doesn't really matter. Um, I usually don't make them version free just because I do want to be able to see the history of that so I can go to see how those have changed over time. So I, I guess I'll, I'll change my answer to that. I'll say yes, it, it is not a version free variable. Um, but again, it, since it doesn't go on a card, it's really not that big of a deal. And the other question is, is there a way to have the latest or at show up first every time you go into a build material? And, and I, I think I know what you're asking there. So um, let's jump over to where I was going. So they have changes, no. And so with that slide we were just looking at goes, as we see here, I have the pin, and the long configuration is one, and the configuration is short, and that's because I am showing configurations. If I hit the drop list and there were several configurations in here, uh, those would all be here. Uh, versus here at the at tab now, I say just I kind of ignore configuration. So if your company does not use configuration of these unique parts, then this is probably what you want. In this case, look, I see, hey, I have a pin on the quantity of three. And I think what this question is asking is there a default, and, and not really, but PDM remembers where you were last. So if I come to this assembly, it remembers, hey, um, oh, I take that back. It isn't. So if I come back to it, it goes right back to the default. Yeah. So um, no, I don't, I've never found a way that it will do anything other than just to pick the first one in, in that list. That's a great enhancement request idea. So you can say, hey, you know, and, and because most companies, right, they use the act symbol. And so um, that would be a, a nice enhancement to go through. Am I doing this in computer bill material, name bill material? And, and so far, yeah, these are all, all computer bill materials. The name bill materials is coming up. So you can, a lot of people think that you can't, but there are, as you've seen, some edits you can do in a computer bill material. Uh, now, there's some things I can't, right? I can't add more, more uh, delete and make changes to things, but the, you can make some manipulations depending on, on if you have checked out the part. So before I checked out that particular bracket, then I was able to edit those particular entities there. Good questions. Thank you. Keep them coming. Those are, those are, those are a good, good questions there. So I think I, I beat this, one, this horse pretty good. So this is a, a little bit of a, an interesting one, and I'm kind of getting into the weeds, but it's, it's fun enough, but I'm going to spend a couple of minutes just kind of talking about it. Um, because uh, 
a lot of people say, okay, you know, we've seen, let's just do this real quick. Any time I'm looking at grid information, I do have the ability to take that and export it out to Excel. Hopefully you guys have all seen this, right? You click this guy, of, I'll answer yes to here, and what that does is it makes, when Excel fires up, it adds an additional column here on the level column so I can see the, the depth of this. This is a bad example. Let's do a different one. Let's go up to one where there is some depth to this assembly. Let's go ahead and do the same thing. We'll export out to a build material. Yes, I'm going to add the create level. Excel fires up down at the very bottom. And now you can kind of see it showing the, the subfolders there. Um, so cool and groovy, but the, the problem is, is is that really behind the scenes what PDM is doing is it's exporting this file out as a common delimited file. Actually, it's a pipe delimited file. But um, And then um, there's no formatting here. You know, so so next time people say, well, I, I guess I'd really like to have these bold and I want to be able to indent and do different types of things to do it. Can I do that? And the answer is a, a little bit, I guess, is probably the, the best way to go. Uh, and I'll show you a couple of examples. Um, um, what, one way you can do it is, and this depends on the version of, of Excel that you're running, if you're using the Office 365, I think the answer is no, that you can't do it with a, a, a template. But some, some, some of the uh, non-web versions, you actually can, inside of your template file, put that kind of information inside of there. So then when, when the file opens up, there, it, that will work. It's not a great solution because now it, that, that template information, that uh, format information is in all my Excel documents, whether I want them or not. So that's not a terrible thing, but it's not great. Um, even if I put that information maybe into a little, uh, what they call it, uh, a macro inside of Excel, I'm still reproducing that over and over again. So I don't love that solution. So I want to show you what I found, but I think it's kind of fun. Um, what, I, what I like to do is to um, make a little macro once and then build that up. And, and here's the gist of what I'm talking about here. I don't know if you guys have ever played with Excel, but you can record a macro. And so what I've done is I went ahead and I, um, if I can show you this next thing, uh, this slide here is almost exactly what a recorded macro looked like when I, when I did to it. I, I went through and I highlighted my, my row, my top row, and I changed the color of it. And I, then I made it bold. So this information right from here down is all just regular uh, recorded information. And so what I like to do, and I'll show you what this looks like backwards, and then I'll show you how I did it. And so here would be an example where you might want to use this. Let's say I have this guy. Let's go ahead and export out to Excel. And so here it is. And I'm not, I'm not going to touch anything with them. I'm going to leave it exactly like it is. And then if you take a little script, and you just double-click on it, and you see what it did. It did a little bit. Now, in this case, it just all I did was you know, highlight this, make it bold and fit everything in there, but certainly you can do a lot more to it. And so, well, um, again, if you want to, at the end, I can, sh I can share this file with you. I'll just show you what it looks like. All I did is from here to here, this is all the information that came just as I, I recorded it. I did it one time and recorded it, and then I added these two lines at the very top which are, are in the, uh, the PowerPoint I'll bring up here in a second. And again, you can email me if you want to see a copy of this guy. And then save it as a VBS file and then store it on your desktop. And a lot of customers want to do is they'll just go ahead and they'll make a nice little quick output, double click on this guy, do it one more time because it was so quick. Say so I got a build material, I'm really happy with it, let's export it out however you want. Here's what he looks like and just double click. And it does that. So it's a real nice little thing. And there's nothing more than using Visual Basic scripts. Uh, there's, there's lots of other ways to do it. We have some customers that really get fancy with it. But uh, this is my 50 cent answer on a real quick way of, of doing exactly uh, that. So if you, if you get a hold of the, the PowerPoint, or I'll just send this to you, and this is exactly the code that, that you do, and I certainly you're welcome to come in here and tweak it. Uh, I don't want to spend a whole lot more time with this, because again, I didn't promise a, a Visual Basic lesson, because most of you guys probably aren't too interested in it, but I think this output is really pretty cool. And I want you to know that there's lots of ways. If you wanted better looking out, outputs, and everybody does, um, there's, there's a way to do that. Give me a call and we can, we can set that up for uh, your favorite uh, CATI representative. Okay, so uh, you had a couple questions earlier. We were talking about name bill materials versus uh, uh, computer bill materials. 
So let's talk about them. And, and unfortunately, uh, at, at this, this is not something for you PDM standard guys. Uh, everything up to this point has been PDM standard, but this is a PDM Pro thing only. Um, so uh, the industry calls calculated bill materials EBOMs. I, which is, uh, and then the industry also calls name bonus or MBOMs, which all of itself is a little bit different. So if you ever hear somebody say EBOMs versus MBOMs, just kind of substitute in your mind calculated uh, versus named. It's the same type of thing. So here's the gotcha. Uh, in, in reality, many times if you think about it, the, uh, the, the calculated bill materials really aren't what uh, the, anybody else outside of engineering wants. And, and so um, here, here's a good example, right? Let's, let's say that uh, you have an assembly that has three factors on it. Well, and your bill material, you have a quantity of three. But a person is going to use a three, what's he going to do with it, right? Because he's going to buy a box of 100. He's certainly not going to buy 300 of them. He's not going to be able to. So he wants something, something different. And, and you run into all kinds of different things where engineering wants this kind of thing. But we all know that you have to buy things differently than what you uh, would do uh, by those. So, so that's kind of where these name bill materials come, come into effect. Um, so another example is, is maybe uh, you might want to put more things on the, on the final bill material than what would be inside of uh, the, the engineering bill material, because maybe part of the, the, the final product, you also include maybe uh, instru packing instructions and maybe uh, uh, a shipping crate and other kinds of bill material type things that, you know, engineer doesn't do, but it doesn't need to be on a bill material somewhere. And so that's where these name bill materials come in pretty cool. So let me show you how you do that. So let's close this, and we'll close this. So this, as we've been talking about for a while, is, is a calculated bill material. But what I want to do is if I want to, I can save it, save as, and give it, turn this into a named bill material. So I'm going to call this one um, Jeff Named. Probably give it a better name than that. But, so what I've just now done is this is a named bill material. You notice that everything's now blue because named bill materials are yours. They're not much different than just regular taking that file and doing a save as, save it as an Excel. I can do lots of different things in here now. I can uh, come in here and go, oh, you know, I really wish I would have called this justice. You're welcome to make those kind of changes. And I can change anything on here because, again, they're all blue. I can also, if I want to, uh, insert so add some additional rows in here. I can uh, delete rows. Maybe, oh, golly, I don't want to buy these because they're just a reference only. I can uh, hide that uh, entire row from here. You can do a lot of neat things with this guy. Edit, 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 edit. Save it. And now this is the name build material that's been saved. Now these name build materials are objects inside of PDM. Um, so they can actually go through a workflow if I want to. Um, here's how you get to those. If you go to display, in this case, we're seeing files, and most of the time, that's what you want to see up here, right, is files. But if you have build materials in here, here we go. Here is a named build material. And you see it can be checked in and out. It can go through a workflow. It can uh, have its own life cycle. So now imagine that I take this named build material, and I push this to, to the purchasing group. Um, here's another neat thing about named build materials is they're dead. They're not connected to that calculated build material anymore. And so uh, continuing the story on, let's imagine that uh, I give my purchasing team, hey, start requisitioning these particular parts. Meanwhile, I know I'm not yet done with it. So I can go in and continue editing and making changes to the calculated build material, knowing that this main build material is not yet up to date. So my, I don't have to worry about the purchasing guy start buying stuff that I'm not yet ready. They're looking at the main build material. In fact, there's a setting inside of PDM where maybe you don't want them to see the calculated build material. You only want them to see the name build materials. Now, the neat thing about these name build materials is that you can still compare build materials from one to another. So the story, like I mentioned earlier, that later on when the purchasing agent gets version 2 of a name build material, they can still use that compare tool to get an understanding of, hey, here's how this uh, assembly it might have changed. Um, but here, another neat thing is, is that uh, this little icon right here, let me bring up the slide again. If you ever see, what was the slide? Here we go. If, you, if this guy ever turns orange like that, that can look to me that, hey, this uh, named bill material is actually out of sync. 
And so um, in my example there, right, I've added more parts to it. My calculated bill material is now, as soon as my calculated bill material changes, in my name bill material, if I look at the name bill material, this guy's going to turn uh, yellow, just simply alerting me that, hey, this is out of sync, in which case many times it might want what you want to know. But um, the neat thing is that then if I click that icon, it will actually give me the ability it will go and find all the new parts from the, uh, from the original uh, assembly and put them um, back into my name bill materials. So that's kind of where name bill materials, there's two big things name bill materials have over just saving the file out of Excel. Uh, one is the compare tool, right, because you can't compare Excel documents, change Excel documents. And the other is this ability right here to say, okay, I know my calculated bill materials changed quite a bit, refresh me, and it goes out and, and updates uh, all the information uh, that I might need to be able to have to it. So again, if you see the exclamation point, then it tells you, hey, uh, I'm different than the calculated bill material, and then it's up to you if you care or not. Versus if you see the, uh, the little just regular refresh button, that basically means that, hey, I'm the exact same uh, of each one of those guys. Now, a little bit word of, of warning. Remember, I went to that one particular part, and I hit it in the main bill material. Um, if you hit the refresh button, it will go through and go, oh, hey, look, this part isn't here, and it will bring it back. And so um, if you refresh them with the, the automatic tool, definitely keep an eye on entities. If you purposely removed entities from your name bill material, then um, when you refresh, they'll come back. And, and I'm not a big fan of that. I wish there was like a way that you could hide it and don't bring it back unless, by golly, I say so. Because uh, maybe I hit it for a reason, right? Maybe I don't want to buy it or something like that. I don't want to accidentally break things up. But other than that, name bill materials are, are really good. So another point to that, remember, if you want your name bill materials to go through life cycles and such, remember to go to a workflow. On your properties of your workflow, you do have the ability to, under, say, object type. And the object type, you have a couple of choices, right? You can, it could be a file, and that's what we almost always use. But if I choose this, now we're talking about only BOM files, name bill materials can go through there. So that's kind of a neat little thing to remember. So again, that name bill material can have a life cycle, and a lot of people really kind of eat that up. Other, other ways to view the name bill material. So remember, when I came here, I was looking at files versus this bill material. So I can see a lot of bill materials here. And I can certainly look at this bill material here, highlight it, and, and see this as you would expect. Also, let's switch back to, to our files. Now that there's a name bill material, Click off of it, click on it again. Now in my drop list, here's my name bill material. So I can come see my name bill material even when I'm looking at a, at a, uh, a build with these guys up. So that's kind of neat. By the way, look, you can hide and update columns too. So you have a lot of control over these name bill materials. And so, uh, again, once again, I forgot I had a slide on this already. So, again, just a real quick review is the, the name bill materials can be checked in and out, the history. And also, I can look at the history. Right? I can look at any type of bill material, see who's done what, when, and why. So, so it behaves like a file, but in reality, it's, it's an object. It's something that's calculated in, in the database any time a user needs it. So here's what I get a lot. The... Uh, the activated versus non-activated, and this doesn't make any sense for standard. I think this button is actually here for standard, but it doesn't do anything in standard. What the activated versus non-activated, and I'll show you real quick what I'm talking about, and then I'll go back to the slide. Anytime I'm looking at a calculated bill of material, you'll see the uh, where I can, it's just a nothing more than a switch. Activated versus non-activated. And what that does, let's go back to our slides here, is that if it's activated, it's a real quick way of taking that calculated bill material and making it behave like a named bill material. And so then you know, the, if, I, if I was a user that would set up something like this where I can't see the computer bill materials, but I can see read name bill materials, really what this is is I can see name bill materials and I can see any activated computer bill material because it takes that computer bill material and really quickly just makes it a named bill material. So that's kind of neat, right, especially if you keep your purchasing agent out of your computer bill materials and only want them to see name bill materials, but ah, I don't really need to keep this up to date. I'm not interested in going through all the effort of making a name bill material over and over again. I'll just activate it. Now, the other thing that you can do, um, again, with PDM Pro, as, as you guys know, you can actually take your <coughs> bill materials 
it automatically exports them out in, uh, into an XML file, which is uh, you can build that up. So in this case here, I can build an XML, uh, an XML rule, an export rule, and uh, one of the options there is only activate, only export activated build materials. And so what this kind of could do, is, if you imagine it, is it, 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 let's imagine that maybe I'm releasing my assemblies and um, they're going through and, and I'm not yet ready for it by accident. And so this way I can say, it keeps my users all right, you have to turn this activated on before those build materials get exported out. So it's kind of neat on, on, in, in theory, but in reality, I'll, I'll warn you, you can be a little bit in trouble with, um, because it doesn't warn you. So let's imagine that uh, when I'm releasing a document, I automatically have an XML file that gets created of my build material. But since it doesn't warn you, and a, a designer, that imagine maybe he forgets to activate it, releases a, his assembly, and then two weeks later, people go, well, where's these parts? How come they're not ordered yet? Because PDM didn't tell the guy, hey, I, you didn't activate it, nothing got done. And so um, if you do decide to use this option, definitely your users need to be on their toes and be very careful to make sure they understand that if you don't activate it, your stuff's not getting by. So really powerful, but kind of risky as well. So wow, we ended up with one minute to spare, um, but certainly there might be some questions. I do want to remind you guys, uh, hopefully you, you enjoyed this. Um, and then we've got some other other great webinars coming up here soon. So uh, I, I guess uh, thanks for attending. Uh, I'll hang here for a little bit. Um, I guess there are no more questions. Good enough. Uh, hope you hope you learned something. Hope I got you at least five and a half things that you learned because that's always, a, you know, watching somebody do something is always kind of fun to learn in different ways, little tips and tricks. I hope you got some value out of the session. Thank you, everybody, and uh, have a good afternoon.